Hello everyone, welcome back to Sydney and Starlet, and if you are new here, what the? Welcome, enjoy the Yo, yes. videos. So today, me and Sydney are going to be reading Disney's Piglet's Big Movie, a read aloud storybook. So let's begin. So yeah, hmm? Cinderella. One fine day in the Hundred Acre Wood, Piglet was putting his favorite drawings of his best friends in his scrapbook. As he finished with the last picture, Piglet noticed his friends walking past his window. They were dressed very oddly indeed. So Piglet put down his scrapbook and went to find out what was going on. When Piglet caught up with his friends, he asked them what they were doing. We're harvest harvesting honey, Pooh told him. It's all in the plan. Can I help you with your big plan? Piglet asked. Perhaps another time, Pooh said. Piglet watched as his friends used a fake beehive to trick some bees into giving away their honey. But the bees began to get angry. Oh, d -d -d dear, Piglet cried. He quickly grabbed Eeyore's megaphone and led the bees into a fake beehive. Piglet saved the day. However, Pooh and the others didn't notice Piglet had helped them. They thought they'd outsmarted the bees with their very big plan. Congratulations to us all, Pooh said happily. Oh, Piglet, Rabbit said. I'm sorry you couldn't be a part of our big plan. Piglet tried to explain what had really happened, but nobody listened to him. Piglet wandered off, feeling very small indeed. He stopped to help a ladybug cross one leaf to another. Then he helped a squirrel reach a haycorn and helped a baby bird return safely to its nest. That made Piglet feel better, but not completely better. It'd be sure it'd, it'd be sure nice if my friends needed me, he said. In the meantime, Pooh and the others found themselves in another sticky situation. The bees had escaped. They were very angry and chased the group all the way to Piglet's house. Poor Eeyore got stung on the nose. While the friends waited inside for the bees to go away, they found Piglet's scrapbook. As they looked through it, they suddenly realized Piglet was missing. Who? Tigger exclaimed. We must find we must have lost track of him after we got chased by the bees. Piglet is so little, Pooh said. He could be in big danger. But how will we find him? Rabbit asked. Pooh picked up the scrapbook. Since this is a book of Piglet's memories, maybe it remembers where Piglet is. The page they opened up showed Owl's house, so the friends decided to go there. When they arrived, Al began to tell a very long story. Finally, he mentioned that Piglet had just passed by. So while Owl continued talking, the friends quietly snuck away. In a different part of the Hundred Acre Wood, Piglet was looking for Pooh and the others. They weren't where he had left them. In fact, there was no sign of his friends anywhere. When he found the broken honey pots and the costumes, he feared the worst. Maybe my friends need me, Piglet said. He rushed out to find them. Meanwhile, Pooh and the others checked Piglet's scrapbook to decide where to look next. They saw the, a drawing of Kanga and Ruse's house. Piglet has always liked visiting Kanga, observed Pooh. Not always, said Eeyore. There was this one time I remember when Kanga and Roo first moved to the Hundred Acre Wood. Pooh said. The tale of the switcheroo. The friends had never seen a kangaroo before. At first, they thought Kanga wanted to eat them. So Rabbit came up with a plan to scare her away. They would hide Roo until Kanga agreed to leave. While Rabbit ran off with Roo, Piglet bravely let Tigger put him into Kanga's pouch. Kanga gave Piglet a big smile and took him inside the house. Then, Kanga gave Piglet a bath. Piglet hated baths. But when it was over, Kanga gave him a cookie and a kiss. And that made everything all right. 
After spending time with Kanga, Piglet ran outside. Piglet! exclaimed Pooh. What did you find out? Actually, Kanga's very nice, Piglet said. Just then, Rabbit arrived with Roo. The two had spent the whole afternoon playing together. I like you, said Roo, giving the exhausted Rabbit a hug. Rabbit had to admit that he liked Roo too. You see, said Pooh, closing the, sc the scrapbook, if it weren't for Piglet, we never would have found out how nice Kanga is. And so to Kanga's house they went. But Kanga and Roo hadn't seen Piglet either. Roo joined the search party, and the pals were off again. Pooh handed Roo the scrapbook. Roo flipped to a page. It shows all of us at the North Pole. So the group decided to go to the North Pole to look for Piglet. Except they couldn't decide which way the North Pole was. Perhaps if we told the story, the story would tell us how to get there, suggested Pooh. The North Pole Adventure. The story began on a day when Piglet and his friends were playing outside Christopher Robin's house. All of a sudden, two boots flew out the window. This can only mean one thing, Pooh began. An expedition, finished Christopher Robin as he came outside. It's when you go off to find a thing, he added. What are we going to find? asked Pooh. The North Pole, replied Christopher Robin. So the friends marched off across the Hundred Acre Wood to find the North Pole. Everything was going well until Roo slipped on a banana peel and fell into a stream. Tigger jumped in to save him but quickly found out he could not swim. Roo, however, floated happily. I don't think I need saving, he called. But that didn't stop Rabbit and Pooh. Their rescue plan was to sail out to Roo. So they made a boat out of an old wash tub using a long stick that Piglet had found for the mast. But they had no luck at all. The tub tipped over and they both fell into the water. Finally, Piglet jumped onto the onto one end of the long stick and launched Roo out of the water. Pooh, could you hold this? Piglet asked, handing his buddy the stick. Then he rushed to catch Roo. But Kanga was the one who caught him, and Pooh was the one who got all the credit for the rescue because he was holding the stick. Pooh has discovered the North Pole, Christopher Robin announced when he saw the big stick. Hooray for Pooh! Everyone cheered. Roo felt sad after hearing the North Pole story. No one said hooray for Piglet, Roo remembered. Just then, the friends spotted Piglet's scarf. It was not wrapped around Piglet as it usually was. Instead, it was caught on a fence. Do you think he's going to be all right? Roo asked, wrapping Piglet's scarf around his neck. Piglet shall be very all right indeed. Pooh told him. Don't let his small size worry you. Once he even made a whole house, Eeyore, Eeyore reminded everyone. They looked to see if they could find that story in the scrapbook. A winter tale. This next tale took place on a winter day. Pooh and Piglet were watching the snow fall. You have a house and I have a house, Piglet said. But poor Eeyore has nothing. Then we'll build Eeyore a house, decided Pooh, right here. And since this is where I thought of it, we shall call this place Pooh Corner. Pooh Corner? asked Piglet shyly. I was thinking along with you. So we could call this place Pooh and Piglet Corner, if Pooh Corner didn't sound better, which it does, being smaller and more like a corner, said Pooh. Just then... Tigger bounced by, and the two pals told him all about the surprise. Their surprise. Say, exclaimed Tigger, I just bounced by a humongous pile of sticks. They'd be po positively perfect for a donkey house. Tigger led them to the sticks. The friends gathered them up and hauled them over to Pooh Corner. Moments later, the house was just about finished. Tigger added one last stick, and it collapsed. 
Everyone could come live with me. Eeyore could come live with me, Pooh suggested. Let's go give old Donkey Boy the good news, Tigger said. While his friends were gone, Piglet worked hard to put the house of sticks back together all by himself. When Pooh and Tigger and when Pooh and Tigger found Eeyore, he was talking with Christopher Robin, who had accidentally built him into a snowman. I built myself a house, just a leaky pile of sticks, Eeyore said. Pooh and Tigger realized what had happened. Not only they failed to make Eeyore a new house, it seems they had taken apart his old one. Just then, Piglet arrived. Eeyore's house is over there, he announced. Come on, I'll show you. Soon they were standing in front of Eeyore's new stick house, which Piglet had rebuilt all by himself. It's my house, all right, Eeyore agreed. But I'm sure this isn't where I built it. But Pooh quickly said, the important thing is that Eeyore has a house, and it's a good, and it's as good as ever. But Eeyore was worried he might lose his house again. Don't worry, Eeyore, Piglet said. I put up a sign so you'll always know where it is. Eeyore was very pleased, and everyone cheered. Hooray for Eeyore's house! But nobody cheered. Hooray for Piglet. After telling the story about Pooh Corner, Pooh closed the scrapbook. You mean Piglet built Eeyore's house all by himself? Roo asked. Yes, Pooh said with a sigh. He thought of how Piglet had named the house after Pooh without minding that Piglet's own name was not on the sign at all. And that's just how much Piglet cares. The friends gathered on a nearby bridge. Soon a cold rain began to fall and there was still no sign sign of piglet the raindrops began smearing the pictures oh smearing the pictures in the scrapbook rabbit tried to wipe the smudges away you're ruining it rabbit tigger exclaimed i am not rabbit cried as they argued the scrapbook slipped out of their grasp and into the river the gang watched sadly as it floated away after a while a sad the sad friends returned to Piglet's house to dry off. The scrapbook gone, they didn't know how they would ever find Piglet. Pooh and Roo stood at the window, looking out at the rain. Pooh drew a picture of Piglet on the misty glass with his paw. Draw another one, Pooh, Roo said. Suddenly, everyone wanted to draw pictures of Piglet. Pooh drew a picture of himself, and Piglet gathered acorns. Tigger drew a picture of Piglet after Kanga gave him a bath. The more the friends drew, the more stories they remembered about Piglet. Piglet was much more important that, than they had ever recognized. Roo leaped onto Eeyore's back. We've got to get Piglet, he cried. The elders agreed. They had to find their friend. So they headed back out into the rain and wind to continue their search. Piglet! Roo called as they searched. Near the bridge, Rabbit found a piece of paper. It's one of Piglet's scrapbook pages, Pooh exclaimed. Look, another one, Roo said. And the more they looked, the more pages they found. Suddenly, Tigger pointed to something stuck on the end of a log hanging over a waterfall. They all hurried closer. It was Piglet's scrapbook. If they got it and put it back together, maybe they could still help maybe it could still help them find Piglet. Pooh carefully climbed out onto the log. Oh bother, he cried, as he slipped and tumbled right through a hole. Pooh closed his eyes, certain that he was going to fall into the river. But instead of feeling wet, he just felt air. Opening his eyes, he saw that he was hanging at the end of a branch. Rabbit, Eeyore, Roo, and Tigger formed a chain, each one holding on to the next friend. They stretched out across the log, but their chain was just a little bit too short. Until Piglet appeared and hurried out onto the log to save his dear friend. Just then, there was a loud crack. 
The wood broke right underneath Pooh and Piglet, and they tumbled out of sight. Oh no! Rabbit cried. We never got to tell Piglet how we feel about him. Or Pooh! Pooh added with a sniffle. But Piglet and Pooh hadn't fallen with the branch after all. They were clinging to the end of the log. They crawled up and found their friends gathered together. Pooh! Piglet! Tigger exclaimed. Everyone was filled with joy. In all the excitement, everyone had forgotten about the scrapbook, and the pages started floating down the river. But Piglet didn't mind, especially when his friends showed him the new drawings they had made. Is that me? He asked as he looked out at one of the pictures. I'm so big. Well, of course you are, Pooh agreed. I'd say this calls for a celebration, Pooh declared. Tigger laughed. A piglety party! Christopher Robin, Owl, and Kanga came over, and everyone had fun playing games, like pin the tail on Eeyore. Pooh quietly left the party. After a bit, he came back in, all out of breath. We have one more thing to show you, he told Piglet. Pooh led Piglet toward Pooh Corner. It's right over here, he said. Piglet gasped when he saw the sign. Pooh and Piglet Corner, he read happily. Yes, Piglet, Pooh said with a smile. From now on, you shall be a big part of all of our plans. The big bell. The is. The end. There you go. So that is it for today, everyone. Really hope you all enjoyed it. And we'll see you all next time. Bye, bye, bye. Bye. Pick out your favorite page. Yank, Tigger, Repoke, Winnie the Pooh, Yank, Piglet, Gank, Tigger, Sayank, Cinderella, Eyank, Eeyore, Who's your favorite character? Winnie the Pooh. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bambi.